Welcome to the Board of Education's meeting. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Motion to go into closed session, pursuant to the general provision article 3-305 and 3-104, I move we go into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of employees, appointees, or officials over whom the public body, this public body has jurisdiction. Any other personnel matter that affects one or more specified in individuals to perform administrative functions and to consult with counsel. May I have a second? A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We'll see you back here at 6 p.m. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to the February 7th Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for county citizens to review on QAC TV Channel 7, a local cable station. The agenda is available on the information table. During this time, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and hold personal conversations and comments outside of the meeting room. We will now stand and repeat, repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> you may I have a motion to approve the agenda for... January 10th? No, February 7th. Yeah, today. today's the agenda. Just approving the agenda. Mm -hmm. Approve the agenda. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move we approve today's agenda. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Approval of the minutes for January 10th, January 24th, and January 31st. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. <clears throat> Dr. Kane, if you would lead us through the recognitions at this time. Okay, this afternoon or this evening, we're going to start with some very special recognitions. First, we're going to start with our National Board Certified Teachers, and I see that we have a nice crowd here tonight to support our teachers. Just for some background, National Board Certification was designed to develop, retain, and recognize accomplished teachers and to generate ongoing improvements in schools nationwide. It's the most respected professional certification available in K-12 through schools. Teachers receiving this award tonight have demonstrated standards-based evidence of the positive effect that they have had on student learning in alignment with five core propositions. Based on those five core propositions, national board standards were created and they define what accomplished teachers should know and be able to do. There are 25 cert certificate areas. Within those 25 certificate areas, there are 16 different subject areas and those are acquired at four different developmental le levels for teachers so that they may become certified. Candidates for National Board Certification must exhibit a deep understanding of their students' content knowledge, use of data and assessments, and teaching practice. They must also participate in learning communities and provide evidence of ongoing reflection and continuous learning. There's consensus among researchers and practitioners that teacher quality is the most important school-based factor determining how well a student will learn. Just last month, our own Queen Anne's County Public Schools budget survey revealed that high levels of student achievement, along with graduation from college and producing career and civic ready students, is a top priority. Creating and sustaining a teaching workforce defined by accomplished teachers um, actually makes the achievement of those priorities possible. So there's a quote that I'd like to share with you. You've probably heard it before. The mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. There are more than 112,000 
teachers across the United States who've achieved national board certification. On this evening in Queen Anne's County Public Schools, we will honor eight of them. They will be from elementary, middle, and high school levels. So honorees, I'm gonna ask that you please come forward when I call your name. And each of our accomplished teachers will wear proudly a pen, a lapel pen, that I'm going to present to them as this is their official pinning ceremony. And they will wear that proudly in recognition of the great accomplishments that they've made in their earning this certification. So I'm gonna ask the board members come with me down to the front. <clears throat> I have Dr. Pearson who is going to uh, assist me. So uh, again, Queen Anne's County Public Schools is proud to announce six teachers at the beginning um, and two new teachers for 2016. So we have two, 2017, so we have six teachers and then we have two additional teachers from the prior year. Um, these teachers devoted a tremendous amount of time, effort, and energy in earning this achievement, and so we just like to recognize them right now. So for the new National Board Certified Teachers, we'll begin with Ms. Jessica Collier, who is Queen Anne's County High School Algebra, Trigonometry, and Honors Pre-Calc Teacher. Please come forward. Lauren Pippin. Lauren Pippin is from Bayside Elementary School. She is a teacher of health and physical education for grades three through five. Is Lauren here this evening? Okay, so Lauren was not able to make it, but please let's give her a round of applause to recognize her. <laughs> Next we have Rebecca Ritz. And Rebecca is a teacher from Kent Island High School who teaches biomedical science. Kelly Nash is a teacher from Stevensville Middle School. She teaches English language arts for grade eight. Yeah. <laughs> Alice Tickler from Churchill Elementary School is a first grade teacher. Please join us and congratulate Ms. Tickler. And then we have Ms. Sherry Valenti from Mattapique Elementary School, who is a math specialist. Thank you very much. The next two teachers I'd like to recognize were not able to attend their pinning ceremony last year, so we're going to do it this year. And that is Ms. Catherine Lang, Kennard Elementary School. She is a teacher of special education. And then, of course, there's a teacher that you know, probably, and that is Ms. Marsha McNeil, who is also Teacher of the Year from Centerville Middle School, eighth grade math and algebra. So once again, we congratulate our teachers, our National Board Certified Teachers. Give them, once again, a round of applause. Certainly, we'll get pictures, but certainly I would remiss if I did not ask those who are here to support these National Board Certified Teachers to please stand because we know that they didn't get here by themselves. <laughs> this is a three-year process for the new teachers. It was a process that was a little bit different from the teachers who, who were here before or who earned this before. That's right. We need to recognize you. Thank you for your support and encouragement, and again, congratulations to our National Board Certified Teachers. Well done.
And so we will continue with our recognitions in just a little bit at the, we're gonna break and we're gonna allow some um, refreshments for just a little bit, but we're gonna continue with our recognitions um, for February. Now, uh, Mr. Chip Brittingham and Wayne Humphreys normally do our Energizer Bunny Awards. They were not able to be here tonight. And I'd also like to tell you that we are getting a new Energizer Bunny. So we're gonna show this one, but our recipients are gonna get some new bunnies so we'll show this tonight but you'll get some new ones they're on the way for our Energizer Bunny Award recipient Michelle Milligan she is the administrative secretary at Stevensville Middle School Michelle is a dynamo in the office her unbelievable extent of knowledge at Stevensville Middle School did I just see you yesterday yes, you <laughs> <laughs> is illustrated as she helps everyone in the building be successful from clocking in to clocking out she lends an ear to all students as firm reminders of rules as well as a shoulder to cry on she does the same for teachers Michelle keeps the office running smoothly, especially during busy times. And she was right there yesterday to help us as we came through. So congratulations. Don't leave, don't leave. And your principal is here? Yes. I didn't see you there. Come on down, Miss Downs. Is there anyone else that you have here with you? Well, let's bring your husband forward too. Come on, husband. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> we'll try. Okay, our next award is the Shining Star Award, and this award goes to Miss Markel Miller. Actually, that's Miller. She is the Shining Star, another Shining Star at Stevensville Middle School. So come on down, Miss Miller. Miss Miller's worked tirelessly to assist students in both their academic endeavors as well as social and emotional wellness. She places high priority on all students and makes them feel as special and unique as they are. Miss Miller's first day coincided with the student's first day, so she hit the ground running. And I have to say also that she accompanied her students who are members of the superintendent's advisory to their first meeting. So thank you for doing that as well. Her ability to learn while working with new platforms and programs has helped Stevensville Middle School achieve great strides in creating personalized schedules designed to meet the needs of the students as well as help students adjust to middle school socially. Thank you, Ms. Miller. We applaud you. Continue to be a shining stars that others may emulate. And this is your Shining Star Award. Now I'm going to give you the box as well. Okay. Okay. And, and who else do you have? Come on, Miss Downs. My mom. And you've got your mom here. Come on down. And Miss Fetus. Come on down. <laughs> And next we have our Queen Anne's County Hero Award recipient, who is Jeremiah Bailey of Stevensville Middle School. 
It is my pleasure to introduce Jeremiah Bailey for this Hero Award. Jeremiah is a very responsible, motivated, and caring student. The, through her many obstacles, she still makes it to school with a smile on her face and has excitement for learning. She excels in all the subjects, and I am especially impressed with her strength and dedication. In addition to her academic excellence, Jeremiah is also a model student and an inspiration to her classmates and staff at Stevensville Middle School. She's a champion for others, and we are very proud of you and welcome you as the as, to the Heroes Club. And I think I saw you in math class on yesterday. Yesterday, didn't I? <laughs> Congratulations. Medal for you. <coughs> and a certificate. Congratulations. Now, who do you have with you today? My lovely mother. Oh, come on. <laughs> And your principal. Excuse me. It's just a Stevensville Middle School type of night. So our Difference Maker Award recipient is Lee Vitas. Reading Specialist at Stevensville Middle School, please come forward once again. <laughs> Ms. Vitas has worked tirelessly this year to assist students and teachers with interventions and test administration. Her dedication to students is evident in her hands-on approach to helping students. Her goal of closing the achievement gap for all students, specifically students receiving special education and English language learner services, is clear, and she is realizing that success. Students feel safe and successful in her hands, and teachers appreciate her help and guidance. We look forward to you continuing to make a great difference in the lives of students. Congratulations, Ms. Vitas. So we've got some some goodies for you. We can leave this here so you, it's not so difficult to hold on to for your picture. Pick it up on the way out. You're more than welcome. And Ms. Vetus, we know that you have Ms. Downs here with you. Do you have anybody else here with my, you? My, my Ms. Miller. Come on, Ms. Miller. <laughs> And lastly, but certainly not least, we have our Spirit Award recipient, and that goes to Marlene Stanton, physical education teacher at Stevensville Middle School. Please come down. Ms. Stanton is a spirited teacher both in the classroom and throughout the building. Her enthusiasm for her job transferred to the students and her love of communication with families is exhibited in her role as webmaster and social media manager for Stevensville Middle School. She shares in celebrations and informs families of happenings as the school uh, moves forward. Ms. Stanton has volunteered to stand in as teacher specialist, as the current teacher specialist is out on maternity leave, and will be instrumental in a seamless semester regarding testing. Congratulations and keep up that great spirit, Ms. Stanton.
So at this time, we're going to move on to uh, community involvement uh, with their board members. And uh, board members, would you like to highlight any of your community involvement over the past month? We started on that side, so we'll start on this side. Captain Kelly. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, I did attend a, a legislative committee meeting um, with MABE. And um, there's a couple of key things to let you, got, you all know about. Um, there's a, they went over some of the legislation that was going on. You can read that on their website. There was one that I thought was, was key. Was, um, it's uh, Senate Bill 132, which is crimes, child abuse, and neglect, failure to report. And they're, they're making that a misdemeanor if people do not report it. Um, when when they have when they knowingly fail to report that was a change um, for anyone dealing or noticing child abuse in the system um, there's a, another item that was discussed and it's the Kerwin Commission legislation as you understand they had a commission meet and the original purpose of it was to deal with um, funding issues and it's a kind of basically trying to figure out how we do MOE, you know, the funding formulas that you need for things. Um, we had, that was, a, we were all excited they were doing that, but this initial y year of work on the commission, they didn't address funding at all. They addressed a bunch of other items. Um, so just quickly, they, their first thing they're asking is to extend the commission so they can, in fact, start looking at funding also. Um, they also, um, or these are some recommendations they're going to, they want to, the, uh, the General Assembly to consider this year. Um, one of them is establishing a career and technical education group um, to look at the CTE programs and the needs of Maryland business community um, to develop rigorous CTE pathways. Um, they look, want to, they recommend to expand the program that established the Maryland Teaching Fellows Scholarship, make sure it's fully funded. They're looking to expand the current program of early childhood education by increasing funding for pre-K grants that exist out there. So there's still, pre-K funding is still hot on, on the uh, agenda. Um, they want to establish a grant program for jurisdictions of schools with high concentrations of poverty to provide additional academic instruction through after school and summer programs um, and require an assessment of those programs to see if they're resulting in good learning objectives and outcomes. Um, they also want to require Maryland State Department of Education to develop a comprehensive recruitment program to get the top 25 percent of the graduates from high schools in each system to encourage them to become teachers. Um, they also re recommending a study of the cost of providing special ed services to the schools um, be contracted to do that and then another one the last one they one of the recommendations to establish a program to provide tutoring services for struggling learners that would supplement classroom instruction with a priority on reading for students in elementary schools that serve communities with high concentrations of poverty so these are some key things they're make recommendations they're making to the general assembly this year and then if they can get extended, then they hopefully will start working on the budgetary items and the funding issues for um, school systems. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I attended a human trafficking seminar at Ken Island, Alum, uh, Ken Island Library this month, and um, it was very informative, very scary, and I recommend that all parents, grandparents, godparents, aunts, uncles, any adult, who's responsible for a child, any um, young adult who's responsible for themselves to really be careful where you go on the internet, what you post, where you delve into. It's very easy to fall through the cracks into this terrible situation. And um, it was quite eye-opening for me. There was a lot of rallying in the audience about it needing to be a school item. I hear that a lot. It's really easy for everybody to say everything needs to be in the schools. 
and put all of the responsibility on our educators, but it's equally our responsibility as young teenagers, parents of even middle school children, know that there are locks and there are um, precautions that you can put into force where they can't sway out into this big black hole that really does exist and it's very easy to find. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I also was able to attend the CTE business tour where the Board of Education partnered with our um, Chamber of Commerce and some local partnerships. We had a facilitator, we had a field trip on to school buses, to several businesses in the community that are very interested in offering our students internships in the summer as well as during the school year. Businesses that we may not even know exist and our program is to introduce it to our students and make them aware that they have these internships. Some are paid, some are not paid. Um, there's a whole lot of business opportunities out there and the businesses are clamoring to support our students. And that was the key thing that I carried away. Miss Miller was in my group and I enjoyed meeting her for my first time. And um, there were community leaders, educators from our system, P PD was professional development was part of their their day there. Um, there was a big thank tank meeting at the end where everybody brought together what they had earned from the situation and what they thought might be solutions. There will probably be a future committee built to in to to just be able to connect these two groups, these businesses who have opportunities for learning and and working, and students who are dying to be doing that. So it was very, very informative and I was delighted to be able to attend. And that was all I was able to do this month. I guess I'm up. I really didn't have much to do this month um, other than um, Sellersville Elementary School and Sellersville Middle School on Monday. Um, yeah, Monday. We weren't at school on Monday. Right. <laughs> Monday. Um, <clears throat> we um, started the Black History Month and we had um, we did the National Readers for Black History, and then um, on February 16th, which is next Friday evening, we will be doing the African American Heritage Dinner and at, at Sellersville Middle School that starts at 6 o'clock that will bring uh, the, the, the African American culture in, you can see as far back as some of the some of the people have the information that they bring in there and then we have a wonderful dinner and um, so we invite everyone to that. Thank you Annette. Um, well January is full of budget work sessions so yeah. attended both of those. Um, one of the best things I did um, was got to go with many of our students to the All Shore band tryouts that were held in Mardella Springs High School Eight counties from the Eastern Shore have students audition for this band. Um, there are two bands, a senior and a middle school, and they, they both have approximately 80 students in each band. Queen Anne's County had a total of 51 students try out and 30 of them will be representing Queen Anne's County in the band. If you break that down, 10% of, of the senior all shore band are from Queen Anne's County. Nearly 30% of the Queen Anne's County students will represent the middle school band. Um, it's quite an honor. Um, they work really, really hard, and the concert will be held in Salisbury this year, April 14th at 7 o'clock. Also, um, I got to attend the high school orientation last night with my son um, at Queen Anne's County High School for incoming freshmen. Uh, Principal Amy Hudock did a fantastic job, and her staff spoke so well. They explained um, the scheduling plan, and they really eased the parents' concerns. And this Saturday is the County History Day competition at Queen Anne's County High School, which I will be also attending. Um, I did a few things this month. I was fortunate enough to be able to attend on January 18th the Queen Anne's County Chamber of Commerce breakfast where Dr. Kane presented on the state of the schools. A lot of great positive messages, a lot of good reception there. Um, I was very pleased to be a part of that. A slide stood out to me in her presentation that I just feel like I want to shed light on, and that is just 
a troubling 20-year trend. Um, in 1997, about 55% of the county's expenditures were allotted to the Queen Anne's County Public School System. 20 years later, we're looking at about 41.48%. So that's about a 10% decrease in what the county's actual expenditures are to the Queen Anne's County Public School System. And I just want to keep digging in and finding out why that is. Um, so other than that, <laughs> it was a great, great um, presentation. You did a wonderful job. I um, have daughters that play in the rec league of basketball, so I bounce all over every Saturday, all over the county, um, from Southersville down to Stevensville. So I get a chance to see the structure of all these different schools where my children do not attend, but I get to see them through their basketball um, playing at this point. Um, so I hope to go back and visit them during my time here on the board in another role. Um, Let's see, I also attended the Queen Anne's County Class of 2022 orientation last night um, at the high school, and I agree, it was, <clears throat> it was well um, organized. It spoke to the students as well as really scared parents like me <laughs> and laid out the different pathways that are available. So I was pleased to see that in my role as a parent in the community. Um, and that was pretty much the last month, so that's it. Busy, busy, busy. Yes. <laughs> Dr. King, would you like to share your events for the last month? Yes, and I apologize in advance if I, if I missed something. Um, so we did have a very busy month. We, um, I went over to Chesapeake Community College and we celebrated uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day with lots of different um, community from not only Queen Anne's County, but our five neighbors, our five neighboring counties. And that was a very, very uh, nice event. And they also recognized a, a well-known um, educator from Queen Anne's County Public Schools. We started our superintendent advisory committees or councils this month. So on January 24th, I was able to meet with our student advisory, our staff advisory, and our parent advisory. It was an awesome day. It was a busy day. It was an awesome day. Our students mostly, we talked about technology devices, and, and they uh, one student had taken a survey, and, and we talked about what ought to happen from the perspective of students. So that was a very informative day. Um, with parents and with staff, we really did go over the budget survey and so that they could understand what the responses were. And we had some conversations about where we ought to move and which direction we ought to move. So it was a very, uh, it was a very informative day. And, and I was glad to get such feedback from our families and, and our, uh, our staff and our students. And I'm really looking forward to our next um, meeting. And on January 18th, yes, I certainly was able to um, present uh, State of the Schools for the Chamber of Commerce kickoff breakfast. And thank you, Ms. Connor, for, uh, O'Connor, for um, your comments on that. It was a, um, it was eye-opening for some, but it was information that others well knew. But um, it was a great opportunity and a great opportunity to collaborate, so I'm grateful for that. Same day, I went to a uh, professional development seminar on managing multiple priorities as one of my goals. I'm supposed to continue my own professional development, so I'm certainly headed in the right direction there. We had, on January the 23rd, Principal Supervisor Regional um, Training, so there are new standards that Mr. Peluski uh, present, pr will present later this evening, and Ms. Pauls, and uh, we learned a bit about how we ought to approach those standards and the background, how those standards came to be. So that was very informative. I was able to attend the Queen Anne's County High School um, Winter Showcase, the meet and greet, and I know that Ms. Hudak was here earlier today, and again, that was a very well put together activity. Lots of families were available to um, see the different programs and things that are going on at that school, in addition to a student versus the staff uh, hockey game at the end. So that was just a fun night for everybody. Um, there are a few other events. Um, on January 22nd, the superintendent group from the Eastern Shore, we met with legislators um, for the Eastern Shore, and certainly Delegate Aarons and several others were there, so that was a great time to be able to sit down and talk with them. I was able to read to students at Sudlersville Elementary School this past Monday for Black History Month, and uh, there are lots and lots of things that are going on, so we're just excited about the engagement <laughs> of our board members and our staff, and, uh, and certainly always welcomed in the 
the schools and, and looking at some great things that are going on. I'm sure Mr. P will talk about the fact that our um, superintendent monitoring visits have resumed again, so we're in the second round of three rounds, and those are going quite well. But I just would like to um, offer a couple of reminders. One is that on March the 29th, that will be a school day. So as you know, the current school calendar allotted four snow days. We've used those four snow days, and so now we're looking at March 29th, that's Thursday, which was originally for spring break, but you held that day on the approved calendar. So March 29th will be a school day. Now, if in fact we use another day, which we don't have, then that means that I have no recourse, but I will send a letter to uh, the State Department asking for a waiver of the 180-day school year because there are no other days that we are legally able to uh, take away from our calendar. So um, that, that's pretty much a done deal. So that will happen, and if that happens, I will certainly put a communication out to, to the public so that everyone is on the same page. And uh, just one other reminder is um, a little early, but students who turn four or children who turned four years old by September 1st of 2018. They are eligible to apply for pre-K. So pre-K um, families are selected, number one, on two priorities first. So students who receive or who qualify for free and reduced price meals, um, students who happen to be homeless, students who uh, receive special education services, those students have priority seats in our pre-K program as mandated by Maryland State Department of Education. So those programs um, will begin registration, or that program, I should say, the pre-K registration will begin on on April 12th at all of our elementary schools. So just wanted to put that out there as a reminder and um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. We'll move on to Mr. Paluski at this time. Good evening. Two, two very quick things I just wanted to highlight. Uh, one, I had a great opportunity to represent uh, Dr. Kane on Monday the 29th at the first really business community education tour. Uh, I'd like to recognize Mr. Adam Tolley, uh, our new supervisor of current technology education and social studies and his work that he's done with Linda Friday of our business uh, chamber of commerce to put an exciting day together for our current technology education teachers. Uh, they had an opportunity to meet uh, Mrs. Harlow was there as well. Uh, they had an opportunity to learn a little bit about a profile of a local business, uh, visit that business, be able to understand the workforce need of that business, understand the skills. Uh, it was a great, great opportunity. There were two buses and two groups. I uh, couldn't say more enough about the work um, that Mr. Tully is doing under superintendent's direction to, to deepen our relationship with our, our business community, um, which has been fantastic, and we'll continue to expand upon that. The second thing I wanted to elaborate on, as superintendent said, we're on our second round uh, of our uh, school site visits. You remember we had done this in the month of October, as well as in the month of um, the beginning of November. We just started those uh, the beginning of this month, so we'll put our second round together. So uh, stay tuned for a summary of that, probably sometime in March or April. That will continue our system level monitoring uh, of instruction. We've got a lot of great people that are doing a lot of great things for kids and, and working really hard, um, and it shows. Thank you. And now we'll move on to our student board members who'd like to go first I'll go all right go ahead Miss Grace <laughs> okay so our second semester at Kent Island High School has just started and we are once again using a virtual back to school night to get students and parents acquainted with new teachers and classes on February 13th we are hosting a pathway night from 4 30 to 6 30 p.m. where department chairs and counselors will be available to answer any questions um, the spring sports orientation is going to be held on February 21st, starting at 6.30 p.m. in the auditorium. And our opening night for Ken Island High School's musical, The Music Man, is on March 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. I lost my connection. Hello. So to start, Queen Anne's County High, I would like to thank the local businesses, community organizations, and high school staff for supporting our winter showcase meet and greet. Everyone's time and effort to support this event is greatly appreciated. Thank you to the parents and students who attended and participated. Queen Anne's National Honor Society will be holding their 5K color run on March 17th at 8 a.m. at the Queen Anne's County High School. The fee is $15 for students and $25 for adults. To register, just check Facebook and click on the 5K color run link. This event will benefit Compass Regional Hospice. We hope to see you there. 
On January 21st, we lost one of our own. Danny McCreary was a senior and an avid fan of theater. He spent much of his time in the library with Ms. Taylor or in the auditorium rehearsing and spending time with the theater kids. He was kind, mischievous, and, fun and a funny student that is loved and missed by all. We send our prayers to the McCreary's and if I could ask for a moment of silence for Danny. Thank you, dear. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move on to the community participation. Um, we ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines, please. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. And we would like you to give us your name and your um, just the town you live in or the part of the county you live in, not your specific address. Um, comments should on, on the sheet your specific address, but we would just like to know where you are when you're up here talking to us. Um, comments should be limited to two minutes in length. Comments longer than two minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item, an agenda item that is expected to appear in the future, or a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. Those items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. This is not the proper avenue to address specific student or employee personnel matters, especially those matters on legal appeal to the board. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools for processing through um, available channels. Citizen participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question at a later date. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to the board and our citizens that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when offering your critique. And we have just one person signed up at this point, uh, Mr. Richard uh, Richard McNeil. <coughs> it wasn't sitting in the back on purpose, but it was full of stuff. Some stuff, Mr. McNeil. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Richard McNeil, and uh, I'm representing the. Uh, retired educators and uh, and myself on two different things. Uh, one, I'd like to, I know as you're working through the uh, budget, as you heard me say, we appreciate, we being the retired group, appreciate the support, continued support for the health care package that uh, we have and uh, ask that you continue to do that as you make your way through that budget process, which I know can be very arduous and time consuming. Um, Last month, I mentioned the monies that come in for the casinos uh, was a, the amount that was originally set up for the support of technology programs and other programs in the educational budget. Uh, if you watched the news last week, uh, there is a proposed bill uh, in the General Assembly to start with next year, 25% of that money actually going into an educational fund the following year, 50%, 75, so that in four years it would be 100%. Whether it gets out of committee or not would be a big question. So I encourage everybody who has anything to uh, do with that to help support that to getting out of committee so at least it gets onto a debate on the floor. Um, I apologize, I can't remember the uh, senator's name who put that bill in place, but they, it is in place for that, at least for that part of it. Um, it was interesting also that if you listen to the State of the Union, uh, President Trump mentioned the need uh, for vocational programs. Uh, I consider that an old term. We call it more career and technology programs. Uh, it'd be interesting, interesting to see if he follows up through and, and if Congress can push some money into school systems to update our programs. I know that, um, it can be a very expensive program because of just the materials that are needed to maintain all of those career pathways and uh, so forth. Um, one last thing and, and then I'll, I'll get out of here. Um, I, and I know that you're all busy. 
but the first two weekends in March, as you heard, the plays, uh, the musicals at both high schools will start. Um, where in this county can you go for great entertainment for less than ten dollars? And um, you know we've got some very very talented people, um, and I look forward to seeing both the music and uh, musical. And uh, I encourage us and everybody listening to get out and support the schools and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. Is Thank there you. anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Okay, we'll close public comments. At this time, we would uh, move on to air presentations. Dr. King? So we don't have um, our National Board Certified Teachers left to, to share some refreshments with, so we'll, go, we'll just go ahead and get started. Our first presentation uh, with Mr. Paluski and Ms. Pauls is going to be about those professional standards for education leaders. Good evening, Mrs. Paul, Ms. Pauls. Good evening, Dr. Kane, Ms. DiMaggio, and board members. Good evening again. For the record, my name is Greg Paluski, Assistant Superintendent, joined by my esteemed colleague, uh, Janet Pauls, our uh, Program Director of Teacher and Leadership Development. And this evening, what we'd like to share with you is a brief overview of how the standards for our educational leaders uh, will be changing in the 2018-2019 uh, year. Excuse me while we... Little click happy there. So one of the things that purposeful to highlight is that the purpose of the standard number one of our educational leaders is to improve the academic improvement improvement of all students, improving teaching and learning. <coughs> the second piece of that is really to grow our leaders, uh, to expand in areas uh, that the research indicates that of the leadership skill and knowledge ability that it takes to be a highly effective leader. And the last piece of that is really to have an evaluation process uh, that is fair, that gives administrators uh, adequate feedback in areas in which they can improve um, overall. I will preface this with uh, most recently, as, as Dr. Kane had mentioned, there was a state-level professional development uh, that was attended by Dr. Kane, Ms. Pauls, uh, as well as Mr. Farley. Unfortunately, I could not attend that uh, due to having the flu myself. Uh, however, the really what we want to share with you this evening is a little bit um, of the educator effective data. This will be state-level data that Ms. Pauls will share. Really the discussion of why the transition between the current standards and the professional standards for educational leaders, some of the, the rubric, the things that were shared at the training, uh, the process that we will go through uh, in the locally developed evaluation process and upcoming professional development experiences. So we know the role of the principal is a multifaceted job uh, and the most critical, one of the most critical jobs in our um, system. And they serve as the instructional leader, that is their overall goal, as well as being able to manage the building, the budget, evaluate teachers, be very involved in the community, create a positive school climate, and of course enforce behavior. So the new model that was developed, um, and it was developed to be able to build relationships with stakeholders through collaborative practices and also to build on effective practices. So it's a little bit different than the older model that we have, but it still has 50% uh, professional practices. And then on the other column for assessment informed growth, it still has student growth for 50%. The, each of the clusters came from the Maryland Instructional Leadership Framework, and you can see them listed. Some of them are similar or the same as the clusters that we had in the past, such as vision, but uh, curriculum and instruction, but there are many new ones, culture, 
uh, observation and evaluation has always been one of the major roles, but technology and data is new. Professional development has been around, but it had a different name. And then stakeholder engagement. And then the ISLAC standards, the International School Leaders Licensure Consortium standards, really looks at operations and budgets, communications, uh, school and community, integrity, fairness, and ethics. And then for student growth, it really looks at a whole school growth model. So in the past three years, you can see the data that came from the state level. And um, you can see that there has been an increase in highly effective over the years. And I think a few, uh, maybe last month, maybe Dr. or Mr. Brown shared Queen Anne's County principal data with you all. And I think we had 70% highly effective and 20%. So you can see where we rank with the state. So there are 10 standards now opposed to the four clusters that we had before. In the past, we only had professional learning, instruction and assessment, school environment and vision. We currently now, uh, the, for the new proposal, is 10 standards. And you can see those standards. Uh, standard one has always been around. Standard two is new. We are now really strongly uh, monitoring ethics. And standard three, equity and Curriculum and instruction will always be around. And then five is new, where we're looking at the academic and social emotional supports for uh, our students and staff members and the total school environment. And then standard six to 10, we're looking at the capacity of our personnel, and that is looking at recruitment and hiring, staff turnover and performance ratings and professional community for teachers and staff, which really looks at workplace conditions, leadership opportunities, and school-wide processes. And then how do we engage the community? Do we, are we able to establish a network of uh, partners with our family and our communities? And then operations, being able to manage resources and budgets, and then school improvement, which is a shared accountability measure. So they kind of clustered the standards so that they would be a little bit easy. They really are all student-centered, and it's really talking about high expectations for all. So they felt as though, and I apologize, this was uh, is a little bit hard to see, but it's the graphic that they gave us. So they've clustered one, two, and three together, a six, seven, eight, and nine, which looks at the community. And then, of course, four and five, which is the curriculum and instruction and being able to care for our students because we can't teach, teach them if we don't care for them. And then 10 being overall school improvement. And the premise was really focused on all types of student support, equity, inclusiveness, social justice, care, trust, and continuous improvement. So the professional standards for educational leaders now have a rubric that before counties had kind of developed their own rubric, um, but they gave us the rubric this time and for each of the standards. And I did leave a copy that you could see much better with Ms. Wright um, because this is a little bit hard to see. And I do have a packet of all 10 standards that we get our rubric for all 10 standards that we can send out as well but they will be rated highly effective, effective developing, and ineffective, and developing is new. We've always done that in Queen Anne's County, but it, it wasn't reported to the state. The state is now saying we will rate them as developing. And it also guides ongoing professional development uh, learning experiences for principals and supervisors. But the rubric at the meeting, we actually had the opportunity to unpack the rubric and we worked in small groups and we had principals, superintendents, um, directors, just a, a mixture of folks there to provide input. And they've had four regional meetings where everyone around the state would have the opportunity to provide input on the rubric. So we talked about the four performance levels. Um, and you can see what the indicators are for each of those levels. Again, developing is new. And the rubric for each of the standards spells out what it would look like for each of those performance levels. So after the presentation, um, the next steps would be if we plan on using the state model, um, and Dr. Kane, you might want to jump in here, uh, we would send a letter signed by the superintendent stating that we will use the state model as it is written. 
and the timeline for that process is August 2018, <coughs> and MSDE will provide feedback sept uh, by September 2018. And if we plan on developing a model, we also have to submit a letter um, signed by the superintendent, and a timeline for that evaluation process is very close to the same, and we have to show a crosswalk to our developed model to the professional standards. And just one quick comment, thank you, Ms. Pauls. We will continue to use the model from the state. I think it's the most reliable model that we have. A lot of uh, metrics would need to be done if we were to try to create our own. And quite frankly, I don't think that we have the staff or the time to handle that. So we'll use the state. <coughs> and some upcoming events. Um, they have training to be able to evaluate, and that's spring of 2018. It's a one-day training. Uh, principal and assistant principal workshops, which will be held during the summer for two days. Promising Principal Academy, which teaches promising principals about budgets and evaluations and being able to manage a building. And this will begin late summer and it'll be a year long um, training. And then Turnaround Leadership Academy, and that's for low performing schools. And again, that begins uh, the same as Promising Principals late summer and um, it will be year long. So they're really going to focus on building the capacity of all staff members and, um, t and they also some focus on teacher evaluation as well. Questions? Mm -hmm. D uh, this academies, are those put on by the state or? We, okay. Yeah. So this is totally a state program sure. then? Yep totally state. Yeah. Is, it, is it major changes from what you've been doing in the past or is it going to be an easy, easy transition for the principals to understand what the new requirements are? Or? Well one of the things that they recommended was that we kind of cluster it and focus on at least three to four standards per year although they would be responsible for, of course for the student growth and that would slowly acclimate the principals to the change in the standards. And I also think, Captain Kelly, that there, there are certainly areas such as school improvement that we often talk about that is now a standalone standard by itself. That's work that they already do. Uh, however, I think it's drawing more focus and attention um, to key areas of, of research that we know that leaders need to have the knowledge and skills in. And it, I think it draws attention to that. Another big one that it really draws attention to is equity. And I know that you've heard Dr. Kane talk a lot about that. The audit talks a lot about that. Um, those are things that are meant to draw a complete focus on the work that we know um, in, in raising the academic achievement of all students. But it will be a gradual release model. We would, I think it would be very difficult to go from Absolutely. four clusters to ten clusters for principals, even though a lot of what they do on a daily basis is already embedded and, you know, they already deal with the budget, the operations, and, and all of that. So, um, but it is, it is different. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Um, Mr. Pelusi. So 7.02, um, our next presentation, Professional Development School Partnerships. We have Ms. Passan, um, Curriculum Instruction Supervisor for English Language Arts, grades 3 to 12, um, and Ms. Michelle Johnson, Elementary Education Field um, Education Experience Coordinator for Teacher Certification and Administration from Washington College. Please welcome them. Thank you. Good evening, President DiMaggio, Dr. Kane, members of the board, and the executive team. I am Bridget Passan, the ELA supervisor for grades 3 through 12. Uh, one of my other exciting roles with the county is, is the PDS uh, Central Office Liaison, so I'm excited to have a special guest here tonight. We'll let her introduce herself. My name is Michelle Johnson, and I, I am the field experience coordinator for elementary, um, even though I also get a chance to observe at the secondary level every now and then. Um, I would like to say three, and they, they left. I wanted to talk about them. Three of your national board um, certified teachers are, they're our mentor teachers, and two of them had the pleasure of my children. So. Isn't that wonderful? Great, all right. So our purpose here tonight is to share information regarding the professional development school partnership between Washington College and Queen Anne's County Public Schools. 
what we really want to highlight um, is the work that we're doing in our schools to support our mentors, as Michelle referenced, our site coordinators in each building, and most especially the interns participating in the teacher certification program. So Michelle's going to um, take over from here and explain the program to you. I, I did too Go many. Back. Go back. We're, I'm a Mac person. Well, the Professional Development School Partnership, it began um, going on 18 years ago under a, f a formal memorandum of understanding. So we have a formal um, signed memorandum of understanding between the school system and Washington College and Kent County Public Schools. So it is a try, it's three entities under the formal memorandum of understanding. In Queen Anne's County, we have two elementary schools, two middle schools, and one high school. So Churchill Elementary, Sudlersville Elementary, Centerville Middle, Sudlersville Middle, and Queen Anne's County High. So it, PDS is, it's a, it makes the school a teacher training site and we share resources so that we can provide field internship, field experiences and internships to pre-service teachers. We can provide differentiation to the students and we enhance the school faculty and staff as a community, as a community of learners. Ah. So, at our elementary sites, Churchill and Sudlersville. Each semester, eight to 10 field experience students are placed. So right, right now, I have um, nine students at um, Churchill and about seven at Sudlersville. And two are at Sudlersville Middle um, because we use the fifth grades at Sudlersville Middle as part of our elementary program. Um, so what does this mean? So in 2013, 2014, we had 15 interns. Six of those interns actually teach right now in Queen Anne's County. That next year, the interns who are doing their 100-day full internship, they go to Kent County. And we have the field experience students in Queen Anne's County. 2015, 2016, we had six interns. Yes, numbers are going down across the state and nationally when it comes to students choosing, or young people choosing to go to college to do traditional um, teaching programs. Um, there's so many non-traditional options out there. But one student was hired. Um, this, in 2016, 2017, um, we had six interns and none of them stayed in um, Queen Anne's County. At the secondary level, Centerville Middle, Sudlersville Middle, and Queen Anne's County High, we place about six to eight field experience students. So the field experience students, they are not doing their full student teaching internship. Um, when students come to Washington College, they can do a field experience freshman year. In fact, we, we encourage one freshman year, one sophomore year. At the elementary level, they do two during their junior year as part of their reading courses, and then their senior year at the elementary level and um, at the secondary level, they are doing their student teaching. So in 2013 and 14, we had four interns Queen Anne's County hired two, 2015, 2016, three, um, and none were hired in Queen Anne's County. 2017 and 2018, this is where we're here now, four interns finished their secondary um, internship. No, you have not hired any yet, but two were math. Um, and they interned at Queen Anne's County High, and I'm hoping that Queen Anne's County may become their home after they graduate in May. I'm gonna let Bridget. <laughs> so governance, when we think about um, PDS, we are, PDS, the state requires 
institutions of higher ed to develop PDS partnerships if they want to be Maryland approved programs to certify teachers. So yes, it was mandated by Maryland, but we love it. We, we love working with our partner counties. Um, and we operate under the standards for Maryland professional development schools. And I, you all have access to a copy of those standards. We have a PDS, we're governed by a PDS steering committee, which includes central office personnel from both counties. So Bridget, that's her role in Queen Anne's County. The principals from each school. A site coordinator is identified it at each school. It is that person's <coughs> role to manage day to day. If there's an issue with an intern, the, in, um, the site coordinator comes to me. If the intern has an issue or the field experience um, student has an issue, they go to the site coordinator at that school. Um, and our, our site coordinators are amazing. Um, the steering committee, I should, uh, the site coordinators, they are implementing the policy. They're placing the interns and field students. They're, the point, they're that point of contact in the building. Um, the Washington College liaisons, that, that would be me, and then I have a partner at the secondary level. We coordinate with the site coordinators, and we prepare the pre-service teachers for the PDS sites. If there's an issue that the site coordinators, they, they want the students prepared with something that is county specific ahead of time, we will do that um, according to school improvement plans. Our steering committee, I, I put up there, our steering committee meets quarterly, but the whole committee actually um, meets two times. And our site coordinators, we meet all four times quarterly. Um, they meet with um, the liaisons. We have a, a Google Docs folder where we are continuously sharing information. And that information includes um, a, a lot of cur curriculum materials. So we'll, we'll have a, a little P micro PD moment at our, at our meetings. And our PDS partnership is formally eval evaluated every seven years um, by MSDE. Um, this is actually a poster that we have put up in um, schools. And it's half of it, and the second half will be the next slide. But we, and I'm not going to highlight all of these. We like to um, share the benefit um, to school systems. And, and parents, this is something that we put up the parents get to see also. So one of the things that PDS will do, it's, it's a benefit. It lowers the student-teacher ratio through co-teaching. So our interns are prepared to co-teach with their mentor teachers. What, what's great about, we, we try to set up this structure so that um, right now, let's, I have four students at Church Hill who are, they're doing their field experience in conjunction with their reading courses. So they're working with those teachers. Um, Jackie Wilhelm knows that these students may be your interns for next semester. So they're going to be there now. They're there now. They'll be there all their senior year. So they're really starting to take, take a look at these students. And these students, are they're getting to know the school community. And it's really a, a, over a two-year period that they're really part of that school community. Um, a benefit is that we're building a professional learning community. Um, our field students support small group enrichment um, or reinforcement of um, whatever their host teacher wants them to do with the students. Um, I'll, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'll go down to the um, end. We provide certification renewal opportunities for teachers who supervise interns. So um, the, the teachers get MSDE credit if they supervise interns. The teachers who are host teachers for students who are also taking their reading courses, they also get one um, CTE credit. And this, la this last slide, benefits to school systems in the future. Um, 
this multiple opportunities for principals to observe prospective teachers in the classroom. Um, I, I always tell our students, especially if they tell me ahead of time that they want to teach in this county, oh, you start your job interview the minute you go in that school to um, do your, your student teaching internship. It's an excellent recruitment tool for interns um, who know the school system and culture and the curriculum. Um, hopefully, you know, we, we, when our teachers are hired, they can hit the ground running with a clear understanding of the um, Maryland classroom requirements. Um, I will skip down. It we're, promotes collaboration through developing shared understanding of pertinent topics, concerns, research, we, that's, we really use our committee meetings, our steering committee meetings and our site coordinators meetings to um, collaborate. Um, it provides opportunities for cross-fertilization between higher education and public schools um, to operate in one another's areas. I will say that most of our adjuncts who are teaching methods courses, they're teachers in the public schools. Um, there, we have had, um, this is Paul back there, you, you'll be with us in the fall. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, we, we really utilize the professionals that we work with and, and trust me, our students, they listen to them a little more than they really want to listen to me because they're like, they know what they're doing. Um, most, yeah. They'll listen to me when they take intro to special ed, diversity inclusion. But um, we want to save any time for you all to ask me any questions. Um, why do we have so few interns? It's the number of students who want to, Washington College is a small liberal arts college. We have Teach for America coming. Um, the new teacher project urban teachers they come and students can go that route who they they want to teach not all students um want to do the traditional certification route i will also say we have a rigorous program um we have eight students, seven students coming up, but that seven students may have been 15 students during early field experience. We wanna make sure we put strong students in the 100-day internship. Okay. It's not like it would be at a university that's more keyed towards education. Um, we, at Washington College, if a student is interested in becoming a teacher, they do not major in education. They have a content major and they do the education program and they must meet rigorous requirements. For example, Maryland State does not require students to, elementary teachers to take content, the, the four content area praxis. So a, a math praxis, a science praxis, um, an ELA praxis and a social studies praxis. We require students to take those four individual um, tests and meet um, our cutoff scores. So a smaller program, smaller number of interns. Small, yes, yeah, smaller program, rigorous program. That's sure. why that's my sure. favorite word. Um, smaller number of interns, but good, strong interns. Thank you. Oh, and well, here's our uh, money. Uh, money wise, is there? How so, that work? of course, how does it always goes when we first started our PDS partnership? There was grant funds from the state, and you know we were able to pay mentor teachers for training. Um, we were we we get a little bit creative now, um, and the 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 college, the different departments, they want to reach out. And so we can, sometimes we find money at the college to do extra things. Um, but yes, money is, it, we, we can go after grants. We, we've gotten grants in the past to um, extend programming, to do more professional development. We 
we're going to bring some math professional development um, into um, our PDS schools. We're working with the principals now, and, and the college, we can find money to, to pay for um, certain things. I don't want to say it's always going to be there. Thank you very much, <coughs> and thank you thank for you. joining us, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, Ms. Passon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. P. And at this point, Ms. Um, Landgraf, are you, would you like to share the uh, monthly expenditure report? Sure. Um, <clears throat> once again, you have two expenditure reports um, posted to board docs. One, report number one, is the 30,000 foot view that gives you basically by category um, what we've spent year to date. And just to give you some <coughs> reference point, I looked at last year um, at this point in the year our total report obligated funds we have 91 percent of our funds obligated at this point in the year last year we were at only two one hundredths of a difference in what we had obligated so we're right on target for where we should be um, the one area of concern for me I thought was in operations um, right now if you look at the second page of the second report under operations under other charges this is where our utility bills are and we haven't had a very um, mild winter this year unfortunately <laughs> and we have really been racking up some expenses there but truthfully we're really not far off where we were this time last year so that that gave me some relief um, and later in the in the board meeting we will um, be requesting a transfer <coughs> of funds to cover some of the areas that are now showing a overage in the budget. Any questions on any of that? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Langriff. Thank you. At this time, we are scheduled to, to take a break. Does anyone want to take a break, or do we want to continue moving on? Well, I guess that means we'll continue to move on. <laughs> um, the HR report, Mr. Farley. I'd like to recommend that the uh, board adopt the HR report as uh, presented. I make a motion that we accept the HR report as presented in closed session. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Now we'll move on to the transportation report. Yes, we have one uh, bus driver, Mr. Uh, Billy Clow, that would like to replace bus 7505. Uh, it's in his 13th year. Um, Mr. Clow has experienced some problems with that bus, and I'd like to add that that bus is used mainly in the northern sector, so it's racked up some miles, and he also drives the uh, evening late run at Queen Anne's County High School. So Mr. Clow is looking to replace that bus next year. I make a motion that we allow Mr. Billy Clow to replace bus number seven seven five zero five. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Ms. Lane Grave will move to the budget transfer. Okay. Um, before you, you have a letter that's written to the county commissioners requesting that we transfer funds between categories. Um, Basically, we've talked about this in the past several months, and this is transportation for special needs students, and um, especially for our, our uh, homeless students. We have several homeless students, some that are in Talbot County, that we have to pick up and transport every day. And then we have special needs students that are across the bridge that we're transporting every day. And our transportation budget is currently over for salaries and I have projected what we're going to need between now and the end of the year, and we need to move $250,000 into transportation to cover this. And we have identified funds between special education um, salaries and instructional salaries where through the normal process of attrition, um, those funds are left, so we're asking that that be moved for that. In addition to that, we're asking for funds to be moved out of instruction into administration, 
in the amount of $55,000. And this is we um, have a proposal to uh, perform a comprehensive uh, compensation study, which is part of what we need to do to revamp our negotiate our salary scales. Um, so we're requesting money for that. Also, we have had a consultant helping us with website design and development and someone helping us with some of our policy review. So we would like to move funds to cover those expenses. And that would be $55,000. So I'm requesting your approval to send this letter to the county commissioners requesting these money to be transferred. Can I uh, get a little description on the comprehensive compensation study? I don't remember discussing that. I couldn't quite hear you. Comprehensive compensation study? What? what a, is a compensation study is normally done by <coughs> first looking at the classifications of all the positions and then gathering market information in order to prepare for us to engage with our union colleagues in determining what is an appropriate compensation structure, how could we approach this by combining information and looking at the positions and uh, determining what is an appropriate uh, market-based wage <coughs> as we move through a collective bargaining process or making a recommendation to the superintendent or the board on a compensation structure that's appropriate for recruiting and retaining uh, the most highly competent um, teachers and staff. How much is that? Uh, the proposal was for thirty-five thousand dollars for all of our um, for all of our people, which would include uh, recommended structures as well as uh, classification review. Have we ever done this before? Not to my knowledge, but it's been done. Uh, the company has done it in a lot of different school districts and a lot of different municipalities. This particular company did uh, Queen Anne's County um, most recently, and uh, that's we got the uh, the name of the company from the county, um, uh, Bev Churchill, uh, and they were able to give us that same kind of uh, financial treatment as a piggyback opportunity. I just kind of wanted to see how long it had been since, but if it's never been done, that's the answer. Well, that's part of the thing. And, and you know, it is, uh, compensation is, is a negotiable um, item, and that's something we would like to engage in discussions with our union colleagues. But we were independently doing this compensation for just Queen Anne's County, or... Are there um, other counties? Because our, our <clears throat> competitor is other counties. It's not. So um, we gather financial data on compensation through um, groups like the Maryland Negotiating Service and MABE. But that's not as exacting as it needs to be because we're not always looking at apples to apples. And so the process needs to be one where we first describe the positions as they exist here and then hold them up in a, in a market comparison that's effective and, and where people find it to be credible. And only through that credibility and an objective third-party review can you really have an effective process. It's what it takes. And it would be all of our employees? That's my understanding from the proposal, yes. Could our step structure be affected? I'm sorry? Could our step structure be affected? The proposal um, says they will make a recommendation. Now, what we actually come to terms about, you know, that's, uh, that's up to the parties. And we should make a recommendation that helps us to recruit and retain the best qualified people. Especially if we've never done that. So why... I'm just to understand what, what problem are we trying to solve here? I think, you know, I, I don't want to speak for the superintendent, but I will say that we have some people among our support ranks who are below the uh, poverty level. Uh, we have difficulty in recruiting and retaining people in critical shortage teaching positions. Um, so I would say objectively, some of our compensation structures are so <coughs> compressed that people feel that they don't see rewards in their later careers. Those, 
those are some of the problems I think we have to face. It, thank you, Mr. Farley. And in addition to that, he mentioned work with the job classification as well as job descriptions. And ours have, they are in dire need of, of some work. And since we can't find evidence that this has happened in the past, when we make recommendations, we are making recommendations on data that might not be, as Mr. Farley calls it, as, ex as exacting as it really ought to be. So sometimes you have to, um, you know, invest in a product which would be some very good um, recommendations, some sound rec recommendations from a company um, that has experience, extensive experience in this area in order to, uh, to make the right recommendations to this board. And it could work on both ends of the spectrum. We could find we have some very overpaid positions based on job description as well as very underpaid positions based on? They, they, and, they are a third party with absolutely table. no investment in what they will produce a report that shows their findings. So we very well may find some um, positions, I'm not going to say people, some positions mm -hmm. that don't have accurate job descriptions, and we very well may find some positions that don't have a salary that is compensate with that job that they do. That, that, that's my point. Great. Thank you so much. Ma Madam Superintendent, if, if, if I may, I would just like to, to add to that uh, two things to draw the board's attention to. Number one, if you look at the, I go back to the curriculum audit, uh, governance and leadership, it talked about the lack of um, uh, job descriptions. And so with that, having the job description and making sure that there's fair compensation to that, I think you had mentioned that. Um, the other thing is the legislative audit that we had. It, it did draw some attention to um, looking at this issue as well. So there are two pieces of evidence there that indicate that this is something that we need to be doing as a school system to move us forward. Are they analyzing our job descriptions as they exist or analyzing what they should be or what? To some extent, um, I think employees need to have a voice in job descriptions. Some folks say that they haven't seen job descriptions. That's some feedback that we've heard recently. So this is part of the comprehensive nature of the classification review is getting, hearing people about what they say their jobs are, validating that with supervisors, making sure that fits with the thinking of the school district about the jobs we need. Um, and then those finding uh, comparable matches with jobs in the marketplace so that we can effectively benchmark our jobs. Not every job has a perfect match, but that's when we say comprehensive, that's what we're talking about. Other questions? No. Okay. So we will now uh, move on to future action items 10.01 policies for first read, inclement weather policy. Oh, wait, we we have have the the oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm jumping ahead here. <laughs> sorry about that, Ms. Robin. That's okay. Do I have approval to send this to the <laughs> county commissioners? <laughs> There you go. I, I motion that we approve to send the transfer letter to the county commissioners. Thank you, Robin. We have a second. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Now we'll move on to future <laughs> action items. Um, 10.01 policies for the first read, inclement weather policy number 426 and inclement weather regulation, regulation number 426.1, Pender. Yes, this um, policy deals with the reporting times during inclement weather, um, states the purpose, the definition of it. The last time that uh, this policy was updated was in uh, 2013. So what we've done is take several documents that were spread across different areas and we combine it into one regulation so that people can easily find that information. So putting that up for review. And code of ethics policy number 104. So our code of ethics was originally implemented in 2012. This, this uh, draft brings it into the new format and adds a couple of features, which you'll note in red. 
uh, stating a purpose, expanding the language to include employees responsible for the school district's purchasing and contracting practices and procedures, as well as adding a definition for what a business entity is. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and saying, you know, essentially who this applies to. Uh, we're, we're in the process now of uh, extending the financial disclosure forms and clarifying um, who those disclosure forms need to be completed by. So this is sent to you for information at this time and we'll follow back up for action. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the increment weather policy number 426 and code of ethics policy number 104 to go to our stakeholders for a first read. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. At this time, we're back to citizen participation. If there's anyone here that would like to speak that did not speak at the first one, um, please come forward at this time. State your name and your address. Okay. So future meetings and events are next Budget work session meeting will be held here on February 14th to be followed by February 21st, another budget work session, and then March 7th, the board meeting, and the budget will be presented by the superintendent. Is there anything, anyone that we forgot that we need to speak about? Okay. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. The ayes have it. Thank you and good night.